In our last meditative experience, the drill in the silence, we moved our thoughts through various areas of the body, speaking positive words to those areas. This relates to another universal idea, a divine idea, that has manifested itself throughout different cultures and in varying religious philosophies. It is the idea of power centers within the body. Why do we concern ourselves with these body centers in meditation? Why not just meditate and let the mind flow free? Meditation is a creative process, and there is a whole school of meditation that uses the idea of power centers as a way of restoring the natural universal unity of mind with God and bringing balance to the body. In the yoga discipline, it is laya or kundalini meditation which uses the power centers in the body. In unity, we use the idea of 12 powers of man. This is described in a book by Charles Fillmore and another book by Cora Fillmore called Christ Enthroned in Man. Both books describe meditation as the way to use the power centers within the body. Among the Rosicrucians, Theosophists, and the Hopi Indian, the Tibetan and Lamistic people, and many other disciplines, there are people who use the power centers within us in meditation. The way they use these power centers is through meditating upon them, quickening, and bringing them into full expression. This idea is based on a theory that is held by many people of religious thought and by many people throughout the world, a not uncommon idea that man is an energy field an energy field that is both psychic, that is spiritual, and physical. We might say etheric and material, visible and invisible. It says that he has within him a dynamic radiating field of energy. Many people see this radiating field of energy as auric emanations, but it is with the idea that man is this energy field that we will concern ourselves. Now, this energy field has within it various centers of vibratory activity. These centers are functioning at various levels of activity. Some of them are very slow in their activity. Some are very rapid. The idea is that if we bring all of these centers into their full expression or to their full vibratory level, then we will be moving in complete harmony once again with the universe. We will have restored ourselves to the harmony, which is our true state. How do we do this? Through prayer and meditation, these vortices of energy are quickened. The yoga philosophers say that these centers are the chakras, which are to be opened. Others would say that you activate these centers so that you free the energy flow or so that the idea does its perfect work within you. When you do this, you free all of the energy that you will ever need to maintain health of body, peace of mind, prosperity in your affairs, and maintain harmonious relationships. This is so because you are flowing with the perfect rhythm and balance of the universe. You will then set up the vibratory conditions which bring these things into your life. We might say, you draw them to you, through you, from within you. 
there is a well-known unity idea that we use over and over again. It is this, that things are drawn to you, through you, from within you. It is this energy field that is within you that makes up the total biopsychic energy field that is man. That is physical and spiritual man. That is invisible and visible. With the awareness of acupuncture stirring today in this country, we find it also deals with the same type of idea. Where most of our schools of thought concerning body centers use just a few, acupuncture uses many, many centers. It is felt that by stimulating these centers within the body with a needle or an electric charge, that they will begin to flow more freely and thereby restore a harmony and a balance to the body so that by using acupuncture, they are able to control the flow of energy. Acupuncturists would say that if you are ill, then the energy flow has slowed down or has become erratic and needs to flow smoothly. Once the energy field begins to move freely and easily, then healing is restored. And that is what it's all about. When you do restore this perfect balance within you, you will have restored yourself to the perfect harmony with the universe, and in the ultimate, you will achieve what is known as Christ consciousness. Cosmic consciousness, or what they call in the Orient, Samadhi, Satori, or Enlightenment. Now let's talk for a few moments about these different centers. In yoga, particularly kundalini or laya yoga, they use the idea of seven centers in the body. Now this is one of those abstract ideas that most people don't understand, that there could be within the body seven centers. The Hindus call these seven centers chakra. This is becoming a more common word. Chakra literally means circle or wheel, and they are often described as lotus. And that is the reason when you see them pictured, they are pictured as a lotus flower. The petals are said to be closed, and when they are fully opened, then the energies which are within the chakra will be released. It is said that there are three nari at the base of the spine, and the kundalini, or life force, resides there. You may hear the word kundalini or life force, often called serpent power. In yoga, they would say that by quickening or releasing this life force, our energy, and letting it pass successfully through the various centers in the body temple, it will not only give the individual the power of the energy that is within the chakra, but will restore him to his universal oneness. He will have achieved enlightenment, that oneness with the universe. Now, each of the chakras is centered along the spinal column, and they have very strange names that we are not familiar with, but the one at the bottom is called Muladra. The next, Sadasan, then Manapur, Anahat, Bishuga, Ajna, and Shashara. These centers relate to the areas of the body, the first, the base of the spine, then the lumbar, then the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the brow, and the cerebrum. 
Often, when you are in meditation, you will feel a great deal of warmth being generated around the area of the solar plexus. This is called your solar furnace. And it is when it is quickened and becomes energized, then there is a great deal of radiant heat that is generated. Those of you who read Shirley MacLaine's book, Don't Fall Off the Mountain, may remember when she was caught in a very cold climate at a very high altitude, she was afraid she was going to freeze to death. But she had studied yoga, and her teacher had taught her about the solar furnace. And by quickening it and going to this center, the solar furnace was heated, and she was able to maintain this heat within her body all night and did not suffer from the cold. Different disciplines relate them more closely to the spine, other disciplines to the gland centers, and some to the plexus centers within the body. These are all located very closely, so there isn't a great deal of difference, but each one has its own way of expressing it. The center located behind the brow relates to the pituitary gland. This is called the center of the third eye. Then at the very top, we have the center which is related to the pineal gland. It is the center of the mind, and it is said that energies enter or leave here depending on which discipline you are talking about. In yoga meditation, the energy moves from the bottom of the spine to the top of the head. The serpent power is said to rise on its tail. However, Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, felt as though there were 12 centers in the body, and these are the ones that you see pictured. He related these 12 centers to the 12 powers of man and to the 12 disciples that Jesus called, and he assigned to each disciple a faculty or power. This is not an idea that Charles Fillmore alone has had, for throughout religious teachings you will find similar ideas to this, that there are twelve qualities which are represented by these disciples that Jesus called. It is as if Jesus, who became and expressed the Christ in its full manifestation, said, now, as I call these twelve powers, are twelve disciples unto me, they will then manifest the allness, the Christ, the anointed one, the full expression of the image and likeness of God, just as I have. So these centers are within our body, represented by the disciples as imagination, will, understanding, faith, zeal, power, love, judgment, order, strength, elimination, and life. And each has a disciple that relates to it. Charles Fillmore called these 12 powers also fundamental ideas. Again, he refers to them as primal creative forces, and he speaks throughout his teaching of the regeneration of the body temple and the regeneration or full manifestation of the Christ man through the quickening of these power centers within the body. Throughout his writings, we find Charles Fillmore talking about the idea of the body regenerating itself. And as we quicken these energy centers within us, then the perfect balance is restored, and there is no death, no destruction, no ending. This is the idea of regeneration. Then we put on the perfect body, not the body we have now. This is where people have a mistaken idea. They think that the body that we will live in eternally is the same body that we have now, 
Not so. It is a purified, cleansed, and vibrantly alive body that is very like unto light. It is likened unto light because as it becomes more energized, it radiates and glows. You have seen people who have this spiritual energy quickened within them, and they glow. In pictures of Jesus, you see a light around his head. It is because he glowed from this light within. He was a very highly radiating energy field and glowed because of this. Those of you who know Brother Mandus know that he glows when he stands up to pray. His face just shines like a radiant beam. Many other persons radiate this same light. Charles Fillmore teaches in his book that we activate these centers by prayer, and he spent many hours in regenerating his body temple through the quickening of these power centers within his body. The Hopi Indians have a whole philosophy that is based on these centers. Although they only have five which they direct their attention to. The first is equivalent to the pineal gland, the second, the pituitary, then the one at the power center or the throat, then the love center at the heart, and the judgment center at the solar plexus. These are the five centers which they use in meditation. The Tibetan system of chakras also uses five centers. Both the Hopi and Tibetan have the energy entering at the top of the head rather than from the base of the spine as in yoga meditation. One way of quickening these centers is through breathing. Prana or pranayama breathing exercises. The Zen Buddhist does not have a discipline of breathing exercises, but learn to meditate, or more correctly, sit, by counting the breath until the mind becomes clear and flows free. Then you spontaneously reach that universal oneness that we are all trying to achieve. In unity, we would put it this way, just be. The idea of spontaneity is just being. Be one with God. Be one with all there is. Let your mind return to that perfect balance you were meant to express. What we are doing in this series of lessons is exposing you to the various forms of relaxation, breathing, sound with power, affirmative thought, and other meditative techniques so that you as an individual can select the form that you find most creative for you. Your meditation should be a creative experience. What works for one person does not work for another. And you alone will find that which is best for you. I use many forms of meditation at different times for different purposes. I find that sometimes I'm singing, sometimes I'm speaking words with great power, and often I use a great deal of imagery in my meditative times. The meditative experience that we are now about to begin will use breathing exercises to quicken these body centers and also to bring peace and healing to mind and body. Through the breathing exercises, we regulate the vital life forces within the body. Any time that you are doing breathing exercises, you should use patience and care in your practice. Do not hurry. Do not strain. Build up your proficiency slowly. 
It is more important that you build it slowly than try to achieve something without this progression of practice. If you wish to go farther in your study, find a good yoga teacher to help you do your pranayama breathing correctly. If you breathe too deeply, too rapidly in the beginning, you will find that you may become dizzy. So do not progress too fast. Use this very simply and very slowly. Time will take care of the proficiency. Now let's begin our meditative process by assuming the posture that we want to take during our quiet time. In the beginning, it is best to sit in a scissors position or in a chair with your back upright, not stiff, your feet flat on the floor, your legs relaxed, your eyes in front of you, your hands in your lap, either turned up in a receptive position or down, or with your right hand cupping your left, at ease and natural, whatever is natural for you, with your eyes closed or partially closed. If do you wish to, at this point, you may begin to try some Zen breathing in that you count your breath from one to ten. Over and over each breath, one through ten. And as you keep count, always going back to one should you lose count, until you find yourself breathing easily, flowing and achieving a clarity of thought. For our purposes now, we are going to do some simple breathing exercises directing the breath and the mind into the body temple. So let's relax, let go, relax and be at peace. Relax. Feel your whole body from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, relaxing and becoming very peaceful. And now become aware of your breathing. The breathing in and the breathing out. At first, it may seem a little rapid as you become aware of it and not flowing so easily and smoothly. But as you relax and as you achieve a state of normal breathing, find your breath relaxing you, taking you deeper and deeper into the quiet, breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out. Now I am going to ask you to follow some very simple directions in your breathing. I want you to breathe very slowly, taking your breath in. Hold it for a moment and then let it out slowly. Breathe in slowly, hold it momently, and let your breath out slowly. Then resume normal breathing, relaxed and peaceful. Do this approximately five times, breathing in, holding, and out slowly.
As you resume normal breathing, feel yourself relaxing and becoming very peaceful. At this time, take both hands and place them just before the rib cage with your fingertips touching. As you breathe in, breathe in slowly and hold for a moment. If you are breathing properly, then your diaphragm should have expanded on the in-breath like a balloon. Then, as you release your breath, it collapses. This is the proper way to breathe, and you should learn to breathe in this manner. In other words, on the in-breath, expanding the diaphragm like a balloon that is being filled with air, and then collapsing the balloon, the diaphragm, on the out-breath. Fill with the in-breath, empty on the out-breath. Practice this about three breaths, in, filling, out, collapsing, and then resume normal breathing. As you resume normal breathing, feel your whole body becoming more and more relaxed, more peaceful. Let your breath move in and out in a rhythmic, balanced flow. Now we are going to begin to take deeper breaths. We are going to take, in just a moment, a deep breath we're going to slowly fill our lungs. We're going to hold our breath until it's comfortable. Do not strain. It does not help to strain. Then to release slowly. Do not hold your breath longer than it is comfortable. You will build up proficiency in time. So now, we will do this three times, taking a deep breath slowly, filling the lungs, holding as long as comfortable, and releasing slowly. Together three times, then resume normal breathing. As you resume normal breathing, feel that all of the impurities that have been within you are flowing out with the out-breath, and that on each in-breath, the divine essence of the universe is flowing in, breathing in the pure essence of God, breathing out all impurities dis-ease, all thoughts of anxiety and care. Now we're going to progress to another form of breathing. This time, we're going to breathe in through both nostrils. We're going to close them off and hold the breath and then direct the breath in your attention throughout your body. If there is any area of your body which is in need of healing, if there is something that is not functioning properly, this is a time to direct your attention and your breath to that part of the body and feel this pure essence of spirit which you are breathing in, cleansing, purifying the body temple. Then we will open the nostrils and release the breath slowly 
and with it all impurities. Then resume normal breathing. So the idea is to breathe in through both nostrils, close them off, hold the breath, direct it throughout your body to any area that is in need of healing, feel the cleansing and purification taking place, then open the nostrils and release the breath and with it all impurities. We will do this twice, after which we will resume normal breathing. Together, As you resume normal breathing, feel all of the impurities that have left your body being dissolved and taken away. You may use this type of breathing exercise at any time to direct it to any part of your body or of your mind to experience healing. For the attention and the cleansing of the breath in the center and the pure essence of spirit actively working there removes dis-ease, disharmony, and all impurities. Now, we are going to breathe and move the breath through the centers of the body. As we breathe, we take in a deep breath, we close off the nostrils, we move the breath first to the top of our head, then to our eyes, then to our throat, then to our heart, our solar plexus, the area around the navel, and then to the lower abdomen, and then up and release. Now this is to be done very slowly and very easily, but on the first time move through the centers fairly rapidly. The top of the head, behind the eyes, at the throat, at the heart, the solar plexus, then the area around the navel, then the lower abdomen. Do this very slowly, breathing in, holding, moving through the centers, then breathing out. We will do this twice at your own rate together. Now, as you resume normal breathing, you realize that you have begun to center your attention upon these centers within the body. This may be the first time that you have done this, and you may not experience anything in particular. It may be a strange sort of idea. But as you become more proficient, you can center this living spiritual energy that is within your breath in each of these centers and then quicken the energy that is within them. So now let's just use one center, the heart center. And let's breathe in very slowly, hold our breath, and center our attention and our breath at the heart center. And as we center it there, let us know that the pure essence of spirit is activating the full energies of our heart center. Hold it there, and then very slowly 
release your breath. So the activity will be to breathe in, center the attention at the heart, feel spiritual essence quickening the heart center, then breathe out slowly. And then do this twice and resume normal breathing together. As you resume normal breathing, feel your body becoming more and more relaxed more and more relaxed. You can center your attention at any time on any of the body centers and behold spirit activating and quickening these centers. And now begin to watch your breath. Begin to watch it as you breathe in and out ever so gently, ever so quietly. Within each breath, you are taking in the pure essence of spirit. On each out breath, you are releasing all tension and care. Peace comes in, anxiety flows out. Love comes in. Love comes in and heals your mind and takes all loneliness away. Health flows in. Disease flows out. You find your breath moving in a quiet rhythm and flow. Let your mind flow with your breath into the quietness, deeper and deeper in the quiet, in the quiet. You may spend as much time as you desire in this quiet place. You may let the mind flow as freely and as far as you desire. After a time of free flowing and quiet, once again bring your attention and your breath back up behind your eyes. Then ever so gently, let light come to the eyes as you slowly open your eyelids, not focusing, but letting light come, letting it come ever so gently until your eyes are open. Then slowly but surely focus on the world around you. And then feel a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving for what you have experienced as you say, thank you, Father. You will want to practice your breathing exercises with regularity, but do not try to do them too quickly but rather build up the proficiency slowly. This way you will achieve longer range benefits from the healing exercises that we have been performing. <laughs> 